All right, let's try to get as much of this done as we can. I think we probably should be able to get this done. Let's do, we didn't, the last thing we did was midpoint, right? And we just barely at the very end uh, got to the formula for a midpoint. Do you remember what the formula was? Yeah, you should have it right in your notes, right? So the midpoint is, it's a, it's a point. All right, so this is a little different because usually you have formulas like you have to like solve for like circumference or radius or I don't know, something like that. But this is a little different because it's not just a number, all right? It's a point. When we did the distance formula, when you plug everything in, you just get a number, right? You get how long a length of a line is or a line segment. Um, this one is not the length of a line. It's where the midpoint is located. So the answer is actually a point. Everybody hearing me on this? Because a lot of kids get confused on this and they, I say midpoint and somebody will say, oh, the midpoint is seven. Does that make any sense? No, it's gotta be a point. It's gotta be an ordered pair. You gotta have X and a Y axis, all right? And so how do you find the X axis or the, yeah, the X part of the midpoint? Well, you just take the two axes, the X1 and the X2, and then you add them up and you divide by two. And then to find the Y part, you add up the Y's and you divide that by two. There it is, that's your midpoint formula. So we didn't do an example because we were running up against time yesterday. So let's do one now. So we're gonna do example two. And it says, find the coordinates of the midpoint. So I'm just, I'm not gonna write the word coordinates. I'm just gonna say find the midpoint. Is that all right? And here's, they give you two points. They give you negative two, three, and they give you one, five. So and one, Five. So we got a formula now, okay? We don't have to draw it out, right? We don't have to count over and up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can just use our formula. So if you take a look at this, this negative two and three, if you want to label it, you can, all right? After you get used to these, you don't really have to do this anymore. But when you first do it, you might want to do this. This is our first point. So that's my first X, so that's the X1. This is my second, or that's the first point, but it's the Y part of the first point. So that's called Y1. Everybody with me on that? So it's not X1, X2. Some people do that. I've seen that a lot. Remember, this is a point. It's got an X and a Y. This is my first point, so I call it X1, Y1. So what am I going to call this one? X2, Y2. All right? You don't have to label them like that, but if it helps you at the beginning, perfectly fine. So now let's throw it into the formula. So what is the formula? I just kind of write the shell of the formula first. Is that all right? And then um, we just do the, we just plug the stuff in the formula. So we, we take the, uh, let's see, let's drop this down a little bit. There you go. We take the two X's, all right? You add them up, divide by two. So which one are the X's? Negative two and the one, all right? So those are my X's and then I divide that by two. I add them up, then I divide it by two. Then I take the two Y's and I add those up. That's three and five. So it's three plus five and then I divide that by two. Now you just do the math and that's your midpoint right there. So what is that? Negative two plus one. Negative one. So that's negative one half and this is what? Let's do this in our head. Three plus five is eight over two is four. Okay. And there it is. That's the midpoint. So your midpoint must be written as an ordered pair or it doesn't make sense, right? If you just put a number, all right, it doesn't make sense for a midpoint. You got to have an ordered pair. So make sure you have the parentheses, the comma. This is your X, this is your Y. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yes, no, maybe? Uh, let me, f let's do, now this one is a little trickier, okay? So you really want to pay attention and write this one down. We're going to use the same formula, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. So on this next problem, I'll just explain it before I write it down. The next problem, they're not going to tell you this right there, but they will tell you what the midpoint is. So they tell you one of the endpoints and they tell you the midpoint, you got to find the other endpoint. All right. Does that make sense? So for instance, it would kind of be like this. Let's go super easy. Remember we talked about the on the road and you got the um, uh, mile markers. All right. So let's say the mile marker is five, okay, and you're at one, and if this is the midpoint, if this is halfway, then what's this going to be? Well, how far is it from here to here? 
how far is it? If you start at the one mile marker and you go to five, how far is that? Four, right, just subtract, right? That's how you find the distance between two points. Five minus one is four. So that means from here to here has got to be how far? Four, but is, do we put a four there? No, we got to do what? Five, talk to me, come on. Plus four, that's right, five plus four, and that would be what? Nine, so this would be the end point. You with me on that? So that's what we're doing. Now we're gonna do a little different. We're not gonna draw a line. We're not just gonna look at it and count how many over and stuff like that. We are gonna do a little bit different, but watch carefully. So here is the next example. So this is example three. Uh, it says find B, and it's a capital B. So what am I finding? I'm finding a what? Capital B is a what? It's a point, that's right. Okay, if, and they tell you some other stuff. Okay, they tell you that point A is negative 3, 4. So that's how they show that. Okay, they say point A, and then right next to it, they put it in parentheses. So the coordinates of point A is negative 3, 4. Does that make sense? Okay. And then they tell you, what else are they going to tell you? They tell you one end point, and they also tell you the midpoint. Okay, so on this one, they're actually going to tell you the midpoint. They use M for midpoint. And they tell you it is negative one comma one half. All right. Now you could sit here and draw it, put negative three, four, put negative one half, and then try to figure out what the end point's gonna be. Eh, that's too much trouble. What I'm gonna do is just use the midpoint formula. Okay. So let's write down the midpoint formula again because I wanna see it. So the midpoint is equal to, I, I like to put the parentheses in the comma there. So it's x1 plus x2 over 2, and it's y1 plus y2 over 2. All right. What I'm going to do is this. Instead of putting, uh, let's just do it in the next step. What do they tell you? They actually tell you the midpoint, don't they? So they actually tell you what this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it down. So what is the midpoint? Negative 1, 1 half equals, all right. Now, it says find B, correct? All right, that's just the other point. So let's give myself a little bit of writing room here. I'm going to put this in parentheses right there. So they tell you A. We can call this X1, Y1, or we call it X2, Y2. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to call this X1, Y1. So what are we trying to find then? X2, Y2, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to write it like that. So X2, Y2. So that's what we're trying to find. All right, so let's go to this. All right, so what are my points? I got a x1, and then I got a x2. How do I find the midpoint? This is where I'm going to put the formula. See all this stuff right here? That's what I'm going to put in here. So what is my x1 and my x2? My x1 is negative 3. Tell you what. Since we're going to be solving for x, let's put the x first. Is that okay with you? All right, so x1, x2, it doesn't matter if we go x2 plus x1. No, it doesn't matter. But in this situation, I'm going to put the x2 first. All right, so I'm going to go x2 plus x1. What's my x1? It's negative 3. So I could just write it as minus 3. Isn't that the same thing as plus negative 3? Yeah. So I'm just going to write it. It just looks a little better like that, don't you think? And then what do I do? divided by 2, because that's what my formula says to do. I'm just taking all these things, and I'm just plugging it into my formula. I took the midpoint, and I plugged it in right there for midpoint, okay? I took, um, and for this point right here, I just take the two x's, add them up, divided by 2. Now I take the two y's and add those up and divide by 2. So let's use the y2, let's do that first, y2, and what's my y1? Four and it's plus, so we're, and it's not a negative, so I just put plus four and put it over two. Everybody with me on that? All I did was just plug stuff into my formula. That's all I did. Everybody good? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is something that maybe you didn't think about. Let's do this in a different color. Well, we are. We're gonna make actually two equations. All right. So watch this. All this stuff right here. What does that equal, all that stuff right there? Negative 1, right. It equals the negative 1. You see that? See, because this equals this, correct? So that must mean that negative 1 
and this are the same exact thing. Agreed? All right. We'll write it down in a second. So what's equal to this then? One half. That's right. So those two yellow ones are going to equal each other. Agreed? Okay. Um, let's go back to white. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. The red ones, I'm going to set them equal to each other. Now, I don't want to put the negative one first. I like the x's on the left-hand side. It's just a preference. You don't have to, but it's my preference. So I'm going to write it like this. x2 minus 3 over 2 equals what? Negative 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some algebra and solve for x2. Okay? Now what do you think I'm going to do? I'll do that in a second. I've got to set up my next one first. So now what am I going to do? The two yellow ones are equal to each other, right? So how am I going to write it? Yep, y2 plus 4 over 2 equals what? 1 half. Are we good? OK. So what did we do so far? All we did was plug our information that they give us into our midpoint formula. OK? But this time, they give you the midpoints. That's a little bit different. All right, you got to find one of these other ones. So I just plug everything in there. The one that I'm missing, I just call x2, y2. If I wanted, I could have called it x1, y1. Does it make any difference? No, it doesn't make any difference. OK? Everybody with me on that? Then I take the x parts of those ordered pairs, and I just set them equal to each other. Then I take the y parts of those ordered pairs, and I set them equal to each other. All right? Now I'm ready to actually do some math all right, and solve for stuff. So what are we going to do to get x2 by itself? What's the first thing I'm going to get rid of? Multiply by 2. Get rid of that 2. Because all this stuff is being divided by 2, I have to get rid of that first. So I multiply this by 2, and I come over here, and I multiply that by 2. All right, so that cancels with that. This is x2 minus 3 equals, this is a times, what's that? It's equals negative 2. One more step. Add a 3, add a 3, and that gives me x2 equals what? 1, all right? That's not my whole answer. It's only half my answer. Now i got to find what? i got to find, no, no squares. I'm not squaring anything. This is, this is not squared. x2. Listen, listen, this is not squared. Look where it is. It's on the bottom. It's just another way of writing x, except I got two different x's, right? One I called x1, one I called x2. Already? All right, let's do this one real quick, okay? So it's not a squared. This is just a variable. All right, so now multiply both sides by 2 here. So that canceled. So y2 plus 4 equals what? 1, right? Because that cancels, that cancels. It's a 1. Then minus 4 from both sides. So what is y2? It's equal to negative 3. So now, what is my midpoint? I'm sorry, what's the other end point? Sorry. It's 1, negative 3. So my answer, so, part, so point B now is 1, negative 3. And that's the other end point, OK? All right, well, we've only done two thirds of this lesson. We still got to do slope, all right? So if you want to look at the next homework, if there's midpoint stuff on there, go ahead and do it. Anything that says slope, don't worry about it because we haven't covered it yet. All right, so we'll do that on Monday.